Hey, so this is a quick video following up on something I wrote replying to Dr. Zai's video on whether you can draw every flag in PowerPoint. Zai, if you're watching, hi. I thought the video was really cool, fantastic work on it. If you want to reference this video, you are free to do that. And I'm also more than happy to voice a few lines if you're interested in including this in a future video. So the second part hasn't been released as of me making this video, but Zai has been kind enough to provide their own paper that the video is based upon. It's a 19 page paper and in it, Zai states, for now, I will assume with great regret that all square roots of primes greater than five are not constructible. I hope someone with a deeper understanding of Google Slides or PowerPoint can answer our glaring open question of which square roots are constructible. And to that, I say, all square roots of natural numbers are constructible. And it's thanks to a tool that Zai didn't cover in the paper, which is the Merge Shapes tool. When you have two shapes, you can go into Format Shape, and then over here, there is Merge Shapes. The dropdown gives five options, Union, Combine, Fragment, Intersect, and Subtract. You can use any of the last four options here. The reason is that they all generate a vertex where two sides intersect. And that's helpful because you can snap lines to those vertices. So how can this be used to construct different square roots? Well, let's take the example of square root 13. Let's bring out the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We'll plug in the hypotenuse to b squared root 13, and after some rewriting, we get this. This tells us that we should find the sum of two natural number squares, which equal to 13. The simplest one is 4 and 9. Take the square roots, and you get 2 and 3. So a 3 by 2 grid will create a diagonal of length square root 13. This is where Zai stopped, because it's not possible to make this flat without eyeballing it. Or can you? Construct a circle of diameter 2. This is the same thing as a circle of radius 1. Then we'll move the circle to be centered on this corner of the right triangle. Let's just move this over to the side and make it a little bit transparent just so we can see things a little bit better. Now we'll use our merge shapes trick. I'll just pick fragment as this lets us get a bunch of different shapes, all of which should have a vertex at this intersection. Finally, we take a line segment and snap between these two vertices. Because a circle is the locus of all points which are the same distance from its center, we can say that this line segment should be the same length as this line segment, which is the original length we began with. Now, how is this useful in any way? Well, note that this line now opens us to construct things with the same length, but at an off-kiltered angle. We can reconstruct our 3x2 grid again, but now mirrored the other way, and voila! This line here, because it was constructed from this right triangle with side lengths 3 and 2, this length must be square root 13. And therefore this square must have a side length of square root 13. This method can be generalized to any square roots which are sums of the squares of any numbers which are co-prime. Lemma 1. If c is the sum of two squares, a squared and b squared, such that a and b are natural numbers, then square root of c is constructible. Fun fact, I first learned this trick in Polybridge, and it's almost the exact same method. The only difference here is instead of taking the intersection of a circle and a line, we just snap a road which we know has a maximum length of 2 meters to be parallel to a given direction. Now, I call this a lemma because this doesn't cover all of square root of n. Let's look at the smallest example that it doesn't get covered, which is square root of 7. Thankfully, the solution is much closer than you might think. First, we'll construct a square root that is adjacent to it. Here, I will pick square root of 6. Let's just run through Zai's method for constructing square root 6. Then, using square root 6 and 1, you can apply the Pythagorean theorem. c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is equal to the square root of 6 plus 1, which is equal to the square root of 7. You can probably guess where we're going with this now. Create a circle with radius 1, fragment it, and then get the angled line segment with length 1. 
Then with this, reconstruct square root of 6 at this angle. This time, I'll show the method that I usually use in Polybridge. Finally, you combine this with the original unit of 1, and you get square root of 7. Thus, we arrive to our final theorem. Theorem 6. Square roots of all natural numbers are constructible. Well, actually, Theorem 6.1. Square roots of all positive rational numbers are constructible. This is just the nature of rational numbers and square roots. You can always rationalize it. And once you rationalize, there's not really anything we're not familiar with. Alright, that's all. This video has already gone longer than I was expecting, and I have something due quite soon, so... Zai, if you made it to the end of this, uh, your video is awesome. I hope that you continue this series, and if you would like, I'll be more than happy to help out. Cheers!